Hello YouTube, Chris Alma. And here I have for you today is the High Grade Universal Century RX-78-2, The Art of Gundam. Uh, so essentially what The Art of Gundam is, uh, there was like, I think an exhibit that happened over in Osaka, uh, and they basically was selling this, as well as many other uh, mobile suits, uh, whether from the high grade line or the master grade line, and they were essentially uh, just kind of making this like clear plastic, um, but still keeping the inner frame, um, you know, Pretty much like a metallic, uh, like a gunmetal. Uh, but for the most part, the outside was um, kind of pearlescent as well as uh, transparent on some of the master grades. Um, but I went ahead and just I found this one. I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that, and I thought it looked kind of cool. Uh, didn't do any work to this. Uh, really, just kind of left it as is. Uh, didn't really even shave off the nubs. Uh, I think like some of the parts I did. Uh, but for the most part, I just kind of like quickly snapped it together because I don't really plan on doing any anything to this. Um, it's just kind of like a novel. You know, type mobile suit uh, or type of kit that I'm gonna have in my collection. Uh, but I think overall it does look really good. Um, it's based off the 30th anniversary uh, high grade, so that wasn't really, really too long ago. I think maybe like 2011 or so. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a, a, a very fine high grade, and uh, once I go over all, all the articulation as well as like uh, any of the small gimmicks or any of the uh, the fine details, you'll definitely understand that it's not really too bad of a mobile suit. It's it may be a little bit dated by some of the mobile suit standards, uh, you know, from today's uh, current releases, uh, but I think overall it is a fine looking mobile suit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the details. Okay, so let's take a look at the details on the head. Uh, the de details are actually pretty good. I know it's gonna be a little bit hard to see with like the kind of pearlescent uh, clear, you know, armor, um, but you can still definitely see some of the, uh, the fine details when it comes to like the vents, uh, Vulcan, some panel lines here and there on the head. Uh, one of the big things is that I would say, you know, definitely cut off the uh, little safety nubs right here on the V fin. Uh, I just think that looks pretty ugly uh, in my opinion. And uh, the only stickers you're really gonna have is going to be for the eyes. Uh, you're gonna have one for like the little red sticker at the top of the camera as well as for uh, the back right there so easily paintable um, like I said I just went ahead and snapped this together real quick so uh, no paint was applied to this mobile suit at all but uh, I think overall the you know the head doesn't look, uh, really look eh, sorry <laughs> doesn't really look too bad uh, now you're also gonna have stickers right here for the neck uh, this is actually uh, the same mold as the blue right here but you put like this little gray stickers right around the neck uh, it's not really like you don't really notice it unless you kind of point it out because the the head you know, pretty much hides it so well, but overall the uh, the head details look pretty good. All right, and we got the body. Uh, the body looks pretty good. Um, not really too much in terms of like panel lining or you know extra details. It's kind of very. Um, it's, it's pretty bland, uh, but there is some uh, little opportunities for panel lining. So if you do want to go ahead and get like the normal version, because I think this is going to be fairly hard for just the average person to come and uh, pick up. Uh, but if you do have an opportunity to get the uh, the Gun 30th Anniversary uh, version, uh, you know I think it's not too bad. You can definitely go ahead and uh, panel line it. Uh, looking at the backpack, now these are just on little pegs, so these aren't going to be able to move up, up and down, but I'm pretty sure you can easily fix that. Um, but they got some nice little details right here in the backpack. I don't think it's like really, really that bad, to be honest. Um, it, it, it's okay for what it is. Okay, so taking a look at the arms, um, there's not as much uh, when it comes to details in the arms themselves. Uh, the shoulders have a little bit, you know, there's like a little panel line that kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little uh, panel line, some little uh, indentions kind of all around that, so if you want to go ahead and panel line that, you definitely can. Other than that, I think it, uh, I think the arms are fine, the inner frame parts probably are like the best looking thing, because uh, I just love that like... I don't know. I love the gunmetal look when it comes to inner frame, so I think it does look fine. Um, you know, it, it, I would just say that maybe you should probably apply more uh, details into it yourself. Like if you want to go ahead and uh, practice panel uh, doing like the panel line carving, this would probably be a good opportunity to go ahead and um, do that on this kit. Okay, and looking at the waist, uh, you know, the waist is kind of it, it is what it is. Uh, there are some pretty good panel lining opportunities uh, on the waist itself. And, you know, the details aren't really too bad. It's kind of more of your standard uh, Type RX-78. Uh, the only problem I have is that um, the little V right here, uh, there's no, oh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining that there isn't a sticker, um, but there's nothing to, you know, even make that, um, 
uh, yellow, how it's supposed to be. So I think that was kind of, you know, weird that they wouldn't even include a sticker at minimum. Um, but I mean, that's easily paintable. Just go ahead. I would, I would just prime it real quick and then just uh, brush a little coat of uh, yellow paint on it and pretty much call it a day. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the waist is kind of is what it is. So that's about it for that. And then looking at the legs, the legs are pretty good. Um, overall, I think the the legs probably have some of the best details on the kit itself. Uh, if you look at like the calf and the thighs, uh, there's definitely a lot of panel lining opportunities uh, that's in there. So um, I, I think it's really nice. And a part of me actually like wanted to go ahead and panel line it, like maybe a uh, maybe gray. I think the gray would have uh, brought it out a little bit more. Uh, but once again, I just you know decided to go ahead and do a little straight build. But I think overall, like the the between the feet, e even like the little um, ankle guards right here the legs the thighs uh, calves you know I think it all looks fantastic so um, if you are deciding to pick up the normal one you're definitely gonna have some opportunities for panel lining and maybe just some uh, some painting you know especially like on these I forgot what they called it's like the magnetic um, like magnetic something but uh, definitely paint these if you want I usually try and paint mine bronze if I can because I think that just looks way better uh, but yeah pretty much the legs look pretty good all right, as far as articulation, uh, the head is pretty much going to be on a little ball joint, so you can move all around, back and forth, uh, basically spin all the way around. And the arms right here, they can basically do a full 360. Uh, these little poly caps uh, will basically allow it to come out pretty much a little bit like so. Uh, also, bicep swivel right, uh, right on the bicep. Now, this is only going to have one part of articulation right here, uh, which is going to give you a 90 degree bend, which I don't think is that great, to be honest. Uh, 90 degrees is like very mediocre. Um, but hey, it kind of is what it is. It's a, fairly, it's a much older uh, high grade. Um, so. I can, I'm not really going to hinder it, but even I think before before this kit even came out, we still had double O kits that had two points of articulation that were fantastic. So uh, not really too much of an excuse on this kit's part. Uh, now you're also going to have uh, basically the hands. So the hands are going to be on little ball joints, can move all the way around. And then looking at the body, uh, basically the waist and everything can swivel back and forth. Uh, these little front skirts are very, very loose. Um, so they kind of like just kind of flop around. And um, you, know, you basically cut them in half and they basically move. Side skirts don't really move up too much about that. And then obviously there's nothing going to be happening on the, uh, the back skirts. Now looking at the legs, uh, basically you can almost do the splits. Eh, actually, no, not even really almost. Uh, that's why the furthest is going to be able to come out. Uh, coming up all the way forward that much and then all the way back about that much because of the back skirts. And then obviously uh, right here on the calf. I'm sorry, the, uh, the thigh, you're basically going to have a little swivel, and then here is going to be uh, another one part of articulation, so not really, really good. <laughs> uh, it's pretty me. I mean, actually, this is not too bad when it comes to the legs, but uh, still having only one part, of uh, one point of articulation just really hinders it. And then looking at the, um, the feet, basically just going to be able to move all the way around. It's going to have uh, two points of articulation, one up here, and then one down here, so not really, really too bad. Uh, kind of just does the job and here are all the accessories that it comes with so let's go ahead and take a look at each individual one all right so one of the main weapons that it's going to have is the beam saber so both of the beam sabers can actually come out uh, unfortunately there's no beam saber effect parts that comes with this kit uh, what they do give you is this very very low quality beam saber that has the hilt attached to it but this right here I'm not going to say it's trash because you can obviously paint it, you know, just paint this uh, however you want, whatever beam color. Um, but I do consider this just, you know, I, I don't want to use this. I want to use something that's a little bit of, of better quality, in my opinion. So I just went ahead and grabbed just one of the beam sabers. Um, actually, this one's from the Heavy Gundam. And I'm pretty sure like most, if not all, Gundams from the Universal Century, uh, their beam sabers are fairly interchangeable um, especially when it comes to like the Amuro Ray kits I'm, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that all the beam sabers are uh, can e easily be plugged into now when it comes to hands the only uh, hand that it can actually hold the beam saber is going to be this one so you only get one open hand these two are closed and the other one's going to be um, a hand to hold like the beam rifle and um, the uh, the bazooka so with this you're only going to be able to hold the uh, beam saber in the right hand and then with the beam saber in hand, it, I think it looks really, really good. Uh, this will more likely be the pose I'm gonna go ahead and keep mine in, uh, and put it on my shelf. Uh, but overall, I think it looks fantastic. Um, you know, definitely recreates that classic Gundam look. 
um, and the articulation is really good. I mean, it really does, does come in handy. You can definitely see um, by this pose, you know, it, the legs are not going to be too too bad, and the arms, you know, they kind of do what they need to do. Uh, but yeah, if you have an extra beam saber in your cl collection, I would just go ahead and pop it right onto that beam saber on the backpack. And the next accessory is going to be the Gundam Hammer. Uh, one of my favorite, you know, personal favorite melee weapons in the Gundam Uni Universal Century. Uh, I think it looks fantastic, and the chain is actually metal. Um, I mean, it's that's pretty unique. I usually always see, uh, even the Master Grades come with a plastic uh, chain, and it's just kind of general, generally low quality, but this you actually get a metal chain, so that's fairly impressive. Um, but you know, it's definitely easily um, attachable to the open hand uh, right there, as I'm about to demonstrate right now. And here he is with the Gundam Hammer. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to get this in a pose unless I'm just too inept to uh, actually get in a good pose. Uh, but I just think like because of the, the hands, you really have to swap these out for maybe uh, some of those extra uh, 1 and 144 hands that Bandai releases. Um, just to kind of give it more expressive uh, dynamic poses. Uh, the feet are going to be a little bit challenging to go ahead and get at the perfect angle as well. Because just they don't want to go ahead and uh, have a good ankle bend. Um, that's just one of the major defaults with this kit. Uh, but I still think, it, you know, in its own right, it looks good. Um, there's not too many Gundams out there that has a Gundam hammer. Uh, so if you just kind of work out the kinks and maybe just kind of, um, you know, add some extra little detail parts uh, to this to give that a more expressive kind of look whenever it's battling, um, I think it's going to look very, very good with the Gundam hammer. Uh, but, you know, let's go ahead and move on to the next accessory. Okay, and the next weapon is going to be the iconic beam rifle. Uh, so the beam rifle looks really good. Um, I think oh, as far as the details go, it, it basically has everything. Uh, this also has a little bit of articulation as far as uh, the handle right here. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks really good. Uh, the scope even moves back and forth. Uh, now this is going to be the hand that is primarily going to be used for this and the bazooka. Uh, all it is is a trigger finger, and that's, that's basically the uh, gist of it. But at least it looks good. Um, so let's go ahead and pop it onto the kit. All right, and here is a little pose for y'all uh, to pose with the beam rifle. Um, I, you know, just went ahead and uh, made the most one of the most iconic poses in the uh, original Gundam series. That final shot. Um, so I think overall it looks really good. Um, the beam rifle, there's no complications with it. it I, I want to say it's like pretty much the same kind of uh, beam rifle that you get with like most of the more recent uh, RX-78-2 uh, kits. Just by the way uh, the details look and everything. Uh, so I could be wrong, but uh, it just looks really like kind of generic in a way. But uh, that's that's actually a good thing. It's it's a very uh, nicely done beam rifle. Okay, and here is the bazooka. Uh, so nothing really crazy about this. Uh, this part doesn't really move. There's no major articulation. Uh, you can definitely put some extra like details in there. So like the uh, the casings right here in the back. If I can, there you go. So uh, all these shells. I mean, you could definitely go ahead and paint those uh, however you wish. Um, I think I think this does have some good opportunities for painting. Uh, if you want to go ahead and detail some parts uh, like up here, maybe make that white. Um, kind of just change this to maybe a lighter you know, gun metal or silver. Uh, so however you really want to do. But I think overall the bazooka, the bazooka does look pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at what he looks like with uh, it equipped. And there he is with the bazooka. Um, I just wish that his left hand had an open hand. Uh, obviously I can probably borrow from one of the many open hand, um, you know, high grade hands I have in my collection. Uh, just, you know, throw it on him. But uh, I really wish the kick just came with an extra hand. I, I, I don't see why that couldn't have been a thing. But hey, it kind of is what it is. Um, you know, I, I think it looks really good. And, you know, obviously you could pull off some pretty amazing poses with uh, the bazooka. Um, I, I just kind of opted in for this one because I think this one looks fine. Uh, but there is a little, another little gimmick that you can actually do with the bazooka. And that's store it right behind on the, uh, the back skirt. All right, so what you want to do is just take this little back piece off right here. And then plug this piece right into the back. And then lastly, you just want to go ahead and, you know, basically just snap it in place. And then you can go ahead and have the bazooka plug right into the back. Okay, and the last accessory that's going to come with is going to be the very basic shield. Um, so I, I like the shield uh, because they actually color separated the yellow, which... A lot of kids, I just don't see that. A lot of times, they'll just put a giant uh, yellow sticker 
right over this part, which uh, to me it just looks horrible. But it does come with this one sticker, the Art of Gundam. It's very, it's very low quality. It's a, it's a low quality sticker in my opinion, but uh, I guess it looks kind of cool. Um, you know, I kind of wish this was a water slide to be honest. I think it would, it would have looked much better. Uh, but the inside looks really good. Uh, a lot of mechanical stuff that you can go ahead and paint on the inside. It's not much you need to fill because uh, a lot of times these uh, shields are just going to be like empty sockets and holes. But uh, this looks more mechanical, so you could definitely go ahead and paint all the inside. Uh, and then on the outside, it has a lot, a lot of good surface details, some, some panel lines right there. And overall, it looks really good. Um, now the way you're going to go ahead and plug this in is uh, like this, so this little peg piece is just going to connect on either side of any arm, just like so. And there he is with the shield, as well as the uh, beam rifle. I think this is kind of like a package deal. Um, I would never have um, basically the shield by itself. You always have to have it accompanied with uh, an offensive weapon. Now I think the beam rifle is just a more iconic weapon, so I'll probably go with that. Uh, however, I think the beam saber is also a really iconic weapon alongside the shield. Um, so a lot of these do go hand in hand, and I think the shield looks fantastic on this kit. Um, and alongside with the beam rifle, it just it's it's just a complete package. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much the main uh, functionality for the shield. But there is one more thing. Uh, you can obviously store it in the back of the shield, and I'm going to show you how all right, so basically you just want to go ahead and flip this little peg piece up like so. And then that's going to be able to just snap right there into uh, the backpack. All in all, I think this kit is fantastic. It's one of those that, you know, it's a little bit old and dated compared to like maybe the revived version. Uh, but I think overall you're really going to be able to get your money's worth. And even though it has a lot of good merits, it's also going to have some bad ones. Uh, essentially the articulation. Now, although not all of it's really bad, the ankles and the elbows are just really going to hinder its ability to be more expressive. And also the lack of extra hands. If they're going to have hands that's going to be on one side, why not the other? Um, I'm pretty much speaking of the open hand to go ahead and dual wield the beam sabers instead of it being exclusively to the right hand. And also an open hand would have been really, really amazing to have on this kit. Uh, just to go ahead and recreate some nice iconic poses. So in weighing the good and the bad of this kit, um, I think there's a lot more good than what there is bad. Uh, for starters, the accessories that you get are just going to be amazing. Uh, you are going to be getting a, a magnitude with the beam rifle, the bazooka, the Gundam hammer, as well as the beam saber. Um, I think that's just a pretty good collection of accessories to have with a little high grade like this. Especially with me paying like about 12 bucks for this kit, um, I don't think I really, I don't think I pretty much wasted my dollar. I think I got exactly what my money was, uh, was worth for this kit and I think it's going to have some pretty good uh, shelf presence overall. Uh, but that's it guys. Definitely thanks for watching. If you do enjoy this kit, um, I would just say try and find it. If you're going to find it for anything over like 20 bucks, I don't think it's going to be really worth it in my opinion. Uh, so perhaps go ahead and wait for you know maybe an eBay uh, kind of like auction or something like that to happen and try and get it for a little bit less than 20 bucks. Uh, but if you do find the original RX-78-2 30th Anniversary Edition, I would say pick it up if you really want to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of work into it. But don't pick it up just to go ahead and straight build it, at least in my opinion. Uh, but that's it for me, guys. Definitely thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next review. Bye-bye.